Um, so we can start with uh, the standard model. And here, the easiest way to analyze what's going to happen uh, when effort Uh, when effort goes to infinity, so when people are really desperate to find jobs, the easiest way to see what happens is to use uh, a labor market diagram. Um, that's going to be very quick. So let's start with our standard model. We put tightness on the y-axis, employment on the x-axis, I'm going to put the labor force here. Okay, and then we're going to plot our equilibrium. So as, as I was saying, the demand hasn't changed at all, although we've introduced that search effort, but that, that makes sense, search effort on the worker side. So for firm, nothing has changed, so we can we'll have a horizontal Uh, labor demand curve that's going to look like this. So that's our demand curve here. For any uh, you know any level of effort, this is not going to be affected. So it's going to look like this. That gives us the equilibrium tightness theta. Then we have the labor supply, and the labor supply is exactly the same shape as before. Um, so here we have zero. Then we have our labor supply. It's going to be increasing convex something like this. This is the labor supply as a function of theta for some e. And so in that equilibrium, this is what happens. So tightness is given by the demand, and then employment is going to be here in equilibrium. So now what we want to know is um, what happens when e, the effort, goes up. Okay, so when E goes up, we know that theta D, the demand, is exactly the same, it's not affected. But what about the labor supply? We know that the labor supply is increasing in effort. So when effort goes up, the labor supply is going to be boosted. So labor supply is going to be boosted. So the way we see it here is that the, when E goes up, the labor supply is going to look something like this. So that's a new labor supply, okay, uh, which we can call labor supply prime. So uh, the labor supply shifts out, so we have a new equilibrium here. Uh, so what we can see is that We have our new equilibrium here, which has the same tightness, but a higher level of employment L prime. But the same tightness, we can call theta prime. Okay, so, um, and you can see the unemployment rate and the unemployment level. So before the unemployment level was here, And uh, once the effort is, has increased, the unemployment level has been shrunk significantly. Now the unemployment level is only here. Okay, so there's much less unemployment. Effort, people search more, the labor supply is boosted, the employment increases, uh, the unemployment shrink. So what we can see is that when effort goes up, employment goes up, unemployment goes down, theta remains the same. 
Okay? Uh, but the key part here is that the unemployment uh, level and therefore the unemployment rates more you, both of them are, are uh, collapsing. That's really the important part here. And um, so now what happens if effort increases to infinity? We know that the labor supply, um, except when theta is equal to zero, in which case nobody finds job, but otherwise the labor supply is going to go also all the way to H. So basically when your effort goes to infinity, the labor supply uh, converges to H. The labor demand is not affected. Okay, so what's going to happen is that at a tightness of zero, the labor supply will be just zero, but then any time the labor supply, the tightness is positive, the labor supply will be equal to H. So the labor supply is going to look like this. Um, okay, so it's going to be basically uh, a curve that's uh, everywhere that on the x-axis and then around against H. And therefore, what's going to be uh, what's going to be so this is LS, which we can call prime prime. Uh, so the tightness hasn't changed, but the labor supply LS prime prime is even further out. Okay, and so what is your new equilibrium? Well, your new equilibrium is here. So L prime prime is equal to H. Okay, so now as your labor supply is shifted to the max out, your employment is the size of the labor force. So everybody is employed. And what you infer from that is that the unemployment level in that world is exactly zero. Okay. So once effort is very, very large, everybody is able to find a job uh, and unemployment disappears, okay? So to sum up, when we have infinite effort, employment is equal to the size of the labor force, unemployment level is equal to an unemployment rate is just zero, tightness hasn't changed. Okay. So what do we infer from this? Well, we infer that when people, if people really want jobs very hard, unemployment will disappear in the standard model. Which also means that you know the fact that there is unemployment that people don't search you know as hard as they could that also kind of an implication of the model. Um, so this also means that all unemployment is frictional because if through search effort you could eliminate matching frictions, unemployment would vanish. So it's another way to say that it's another way to see that all unemployment. is uh, frictional in the standard model. And so of course here's a direct implication that um, as we had discussed and we will later on we are going to um, we're going to look more carefully at the policy implications of different models so we're going to look at 
unemployment insurance and different models we're going to look at the role of public employment and other policies but at a high level we can see here immediately that any policy that uh, makes people search harder is going to be very effective in the standard model because it can eliminate all unemployment okay so it tilts policy recommendation in a very clear way uh, just say that if people search more you could eliminate unemployment and uh, so what that also means is that uh, the fact that if people really wanted job, unemployment would vanish, this also tells you that um, there is no lack of job in the standard model. Of course, because if there was a lack of job, um, firms would not absorb all workers even if they search uh, very hard. So there is no lack of job. Um, there is no job rationing, which is just the same. Okay, so we get back to the same conclusion as when we took the approach of bringing the routine in cost to zero. Here it's interesting, it's by looking at what happened when search effort goes to infinity. And of course, if we go back to our pictures of the job queues, job queues are situations in bad times when workers really want, job, really want jobs so that they, you know, they basically uh, queue in front of factory gates. And what we see is that even when they do that in bad times, Unemployment doesn't disappear. Not everybody finds a job. You know, during the Great Depression, the unemployment rate was 25%. Although people were desperate to get jobs and they were camping outside of factory gates. So, but here that wouldn't happen in that model. What that model uh, says is that if people search very hard, unemployment would disappear. So, uh, the model is not consistent. with uh, queues of workers. In recessions. So the model is not able to describe why workers queue for jobs in recession. So what that tells us is that um, the model failed Kuhn's first criterion that the model that uh, a model has to offer a good description of reality because these models are not able to describe what happens in bad times. Uh, the standard model does not describe uh, recessions. Recessions well. So it fails Kuhn's first criterion, which is that the model has to offer a good description of reality. Um, okay, because it is inconsistent with um, queues of workers. Okay, um, and so that's why in my PhD thesis I try to extend that model. Uh, to be able to be consistent with um, the fact that workers do queue in bad times, so that we have a model that describes bad times better. 